I was recently watching one of Electronoob's videos, and I saw this comment asking for a password door lock using the Nexian display, so that's what we'll be making today. You'll need a Nextian display, I'm using the 3.5 inch enhanced, an Arduino, in my case the Nano, a mini USB cable, micro SD card, and a servo, solenoid, or whatever you want to use to physically unlock the door. A link to all the files from this project will be in the description below. I took a screenshot of my iPhone passcode screen and cropped out the unwanted parts using the stock photo editor. Like many Nextian designs, we'll be starting off in GIMP to make the image of the passcode when it's not being pressed and when it's being pressed. I'm using the 3.5 inch Nextian screen, so I'll create a new project with a resolution of 320 by 480 pixels. I'll import it as a new layer into GIMP. I'll scale the layer to fit the desired pixels. I'll export this as the image of the numbers when it's not being pressed. Then I'll use the brush tool set to approximately the size of the buttons. I'll set the color to a light gray and turn down the opacity so that I can still see the numbers through it. I'll go through and do this to all the buttons and fill in the six little dots too. Then I'll export it. In the Nextian editor, I'll create a new project. Select the 3.5 inch enhanced display and make sure the vertical orientation is selected. Then I'll import the two pictures we just created created into the Nextian editor. I'll set the background image as the image of the buttons not being pressed. Next, I'll create a button that covers one of the numbers. I'll make sure to clear the text to make sure there's not an error since I haven't created any fonts yet. I'll set it up as a crop image, set the unpressed picture to zero, and the pressed picture to one. Now I can just copy and paste the button over all the rest of the numbers. Then for the six dots, I'll put a crop image over each of them and set the picture to picture zero. And we'll use the code to change the picture to picture one as we press the buttons. Next, we'll create the unlocked screen. This will be fairly simple since it will just have the lock button, but you can add more things here if you want. I'll import a font I've previously created and create a single large button that says lock. The code for the lock button is super simple and it's just page zero, which takes us back to the passcode screen. In the pre-initialized section of each page, we will have it send the page ID to the Arduino. Since page one is displayed when unlocked and page zero is displayed when the lock button is pressed, sending the page ID to the Arduino will let the Arduino know when to lock and unlock the door. Here is the page ID for page 0 and for page 1. Now we can code the passcode part. I've created a variable called code, which will store what we want the six digit passcode to be. I've set this variable as a string with our passcode being 123456 and a max length of six since it's a six digit passcode. You can change the text attribute to be any six digit passcode you want. I've also created two more variables called VA0 and VA1. VA0 will be a string that will store the numbers we type in with a max length of six. VA1 is just a counter to tell us how many numbers have been entered so far and so the Nexia knows how many of the six dots to light up. This variable should be set to a number with the value zero since no numbers have been pressed when the screen first boots up. For the numbers code, we first start by adding the number of the button to the end of our VA0 string. Remember, VA0 is a string, not a number, so the number we add to the string must be in quotes. Next, since a button has been pressed, we will add one to our counter variable. Then we will check if our counter is equal to one through six and light up the corresponding number of dots. For example, if the counter is 1, Q0, which is the first dot, will have its picture changed from 0 to 1. The same thing happens for 2 through 6. However, since the passcode is 6 digits, on the 6th button press, we will check to see if the VA0 variable, which was storing the passcode we typed in, is equal to the code variable, which is the passcode we set. If they are equal, then we can go to page 1. Otherwise, it'll clear the VA0, set our counter back to 0, and set all our dots back to pick 0, which essentially resets it and allows us to try the passcode code again. For every other button, the code is exactly the same except for this number, which you will just replace with whatever number the button is. Just copy and paste the code into every button, change that value, and it's ready to be uploaded to your Nexian screen. In the Arduino IDE, the first thing I do is include the Nexian library. Since I'm using a servo, I have to include the servo library, but if you're using a solenoid, you wouldn't need this. I have to create a servo object called MyServo. I'll be using the software serial library with the Arduino Nano, so I'll set that up on pins 11 and 12. If you have not already modified your Nexian library to use software serial, look up a tutorial on how to do this. Since we're having the Nexian send the page ID when the page changes, we'll declare these pages as a touch event and set the page, ID, and name. Next we'll add the two pages to a list of touch events that the Arduino will be looking for. We'll create push callback methods for each page, which is where we put the code for what we want the Arduino to do when each page is displayed. Remember, pushing us the lock button brought us back to page zero, so when page zero is loaded, we want the door to lock. I'll be calling the method that I made called lock door, 
which I'll show in a minute. I also have the built-in LED turn on just as another indicator to see if it's locked or unlocked, but this is not necessary. The same is done for when page 1 is loaded, except the unlock door method is called. Inside the lock door method, it simply sets the servo position to 180 degrees, and the unlock door method sets the servo position to 0 degrees. If this were a solenoid, you would probably be turning on a relay, so you'd digital write the relay pin high or low instead of moving a servo. In the setup method, we will begin the software serial at a baud rate of 9600, then send this three times, which we have to do after every command we send to the next DM. Then we will attach the push callbacks to page 0 and page 1, and attach the servo to pin 9 or any pin with PWM. I'll immediately call the lock door method to make sure restarting the device doesn't unlock the door, and set pin 13, which is the internal LED, as an output. Lastly, in the loop we'll check for touch events with a delay of 5 milliseconds for stability and upload this to the Arduino. For the circuit, I've simply connected the screen pins to 11 and 12 and power with some jumper wires and the servo to power and pin 9. As you can see, when I type in the wrong passcode, it resets. But if I type in the correct one, the servo turns 180 degrees and turns back when I press lock. I've screwed a sliding bolt lock onto a piece of wood for demonstration, and drawn a bolt action sniper because it's fun to play with. Keep the change, you filthy animal! I wrapped a piece of wire around the bolt, and put the other end in the hole in the servo that gave me the correct range of motion, and hot glued the servo to the wood. When I type in the passcode, the servo turns, pulling the wire, which pulls the bolt open. When I press lock, the servo turns in the opposite direction, pushing the bolt back into the locked position. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.